Hi, this is Tom from zerodefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through acute cholangitis. And you can find written notes on this topic at zerodefinals.com slash acute cholangitis or in the general surgery section of the Zero Definals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Acute cholangitis is infection and inflammation in the bile ducts. It's a surgical emergency and it has a high mortality rate due to sepsis and septicemia. There are two main causes of acute cholangitis. Firstly, obstruction in the bile ducts, stopping the flow of bile, for example, gallstones in the common bile duct. And secondly, infection introduced during an ERCP procedure. The most common organisms are E. coli, Klebsiella species, and Enterococcus species. Let's talk about Charcot's triad. Acute cholangitis presents with Charcot's triad, which is three things, right upper quadrant pain, fever, and jaundice. And jaundice refers to when a patient has a raised bilirubin. A Tom tip for you, it's worth remembering Charcot's triad. If you see a patient in your exams with fever, raised bilirubin, and right upper quadrant pain, then you know the diagnosis is acute cholangitis. Let's talk about management. Patients with suspected acute cholangitis need emergency admission for investigations and management. Patients need acute management of sepsis and acute abdomen, and this includes making them nil by mouth, giving IV fluids, taking blood cultures, giving IV antibiotics according to the local guidelines and involving seniors and potentially the high dependency unit or the intensive care unit. When you need to do imaging in order to diagnose a common bile duct stone and cholangitis, you can start with an abdominal ultrasound scan which will be the least sensitive investigation. After that a CT scan is more sensitive than an ultrasound a magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography or MRCP scan is more sensitive than that and the most sensitive investigation is an endoscopic ultrasound scan. An endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography or ERCP procedure is required to remove stones that are blocking the bile duct. This involves inserting an endoscope down the esophagus, past the stomach, to the duodenum, and then to the opening of the common bile duct, which is called the sphincter of Oddi. This gives the operator access to the biliary system. A number of procedures can be performed during the ERCP. Cholangiopancreatography involves a retrograde injection of contrast into the duct through the sphincter of Oddi and then taking images to visualize the biliary system. This will give an outline of any stones that are blocking the duct and tell you where there's any problems in the biliary system. A sphincterotomy involves making a cut in the sphincter to dilate it and make it easier to remove stones or for the bile duct to drain. A stone removal procedure involves inserting a basket into the duct and then pulling it through the common bile duct to remove any stones. Essentially this is like sweeping the bile duct to pull any stones out. Balloon dilatation involves inserting a balloon into the common bile duct and then inflating it at specific points along the bile duct to treat any strictures. Biliary stenting involves inserting a stent into the duct to keep it patent so that it can continue to drain and this can be used to treat strictures or tumours. And finally, biopsies can also be taken during an ERCP procedure and this involves taking a small sample of tissue to diagnose any obstructing lesions. 
Percutaneous transhepatic cholangiogram, or PTC, involves radiologically guided insertion of a drain through the skin and the liver into the bile ducts. The drain relieves the immediate obstruction to the bile duct, and a stent can be inserted to give a longer lasting relief to the obstruction. This is an option for patients that are less suitable for an ERCP procedure or where the ERCP procedure has failed. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.